But can you see me? I can see you. This is a wonderful plaque that we got from millions of subscribers. We thought by way of celebrating, we'd, um, we'd up our game and get a really good quality camera, which we're using now, a cinema quality camera. So we thought the first thing we'd do with it, perhaps, is show some of the toys I picked up in the year 2000, which is a famous year, of course, for humanity, but for my collection, it was an excellent year. I found so many things, and this is just one of about five or six cases, I think, which I got in the year 2000 AD. The cases themselves don't work too much as a case, but it's not supposed to. It's just supposed to hold my toys, and there's some of the toys which I picked up in this year, 19 years ago. So let's see what we can find here amongst the strange stuff. There's quite a few, what I would call, spinning top type of toys. There's lots of them in that actually. I'm going to get out for them. Well, let's start with two of them. This is a very strange one. It's made for very small children. And the way you operate it, which is bizarre, is the bottom half is separated from the top half. When a child turns it, it's, it's got a little gearing which then works on a flywheel and makes it spin faster. Put it on the table and it spins. Nice little spiral there too. A very, very small, but simple idea for a tiny child who can only just do simple movements with their hands. Nothing complicated like turning a handle. You just turn the base of that and it speeds up the top. So meant for really infants. But it was such an extraordinary idea for a spinning top, I thought better buy one of those for my collection. The more normal one is one of the old spring-loaded ones, and it's got little batteries in this as well, just to make a bit of fun and games. It plays a tune or two when it's going, but this is 19 years old, so you can't guarantee things which are 19 years old. Ooh. Ooh. It's not bad. Yeah, that's all right then. Okay. Occasional hiccup, but it's all right. It works. Good something on you. There's an extraordinary one here which I've had a lot of trouble with because you're supposed to actually make a stack of these. And how on earth I'm going to stack these toys? Tops, I don't know. I'll just do the first one. They're not battery operated or anything. They're simply a spring loaded one. And you do that, and then if you're feeling good and active, you have a go at getting a very small one and try to get it on top of the thing itself. Oh, didn't quite succeed. Never mind. Try another one. Oh yes, there we are. What it's supposed to do, of course, is make a stack of them, one upon the other, upon the other, upon the other, upon the other one that's fallen on the floor. It's five in a row, if you can do it before they all run out of energy. Quite difficult to do that, actually, so I will not try that now, but it's a, it's a nice challenge. This is one of the most attractive ones I've ever come across. So good that when I found it had dried out after 19 years, I I made a tiny little hole, and then with a hybrid of a syringe, I put some more water in it to make it go. Look at this. It's got water in there, which is coloured blue. When the central bit moves like that, it speeds up and spins. <coughs> and that's the water, the blue, the blue water, dyed water is now spinning outwards. If I stop this, however, it continues to revolve. Inside, the liquid is still going around in a ring, a ring of liquid. As it slows down, it has a lovely action. It's under centrifugal force and it's about to give way to gravitational force. Look at it as it goes. Wow, look at that. What a lovely transformation, isn't it? Set it spinning again and you do the whole thing again. So that's a lovely demonstration of centrifugal forcing. There's an extraordinary one here which I'm very fond of. I'll do it with apples, which is easy to... What it does is it's got a little fan inside it. Quite a strong breeze which blows up there. So this is an apple balloon and I'll get it to spin in the air. Oops, is it? it spins upside down because of the weights. Oh well, that's life. Here's another one. No, it doesn't want to do it. Two ones from the other? No, no. Try that one instead of that one? Sort of. Got the idea anyway. And then what's much more exciting I think is to make an earth and a moon system, and this is um, these are the Japanese paper balloons that you simply put that in, you blow it up, do the last little bit like that, and there's a globe of the world, and we set them spinning. So 
Hang on, where's the switch? Look at this. I think it should revolve around, but I have to do something to the veins of it to make it do that, I suppose. Let's have a go with the other one, which is the moon. I'll turn it off for a sec. Ooh. Oh, I'll let the moon go. Some nice ones there, and it's got some very, very good play value for small kids. That's what I'm looking for. This is one of these. I think it's the earliest days, for 2000, they didn't have many of these at the time. It's one of these little jittery things with an eccentric motor, which you can see at the top, that thing there. And it has a lovely action. Bizarre. Like a real hoppity hoppity grasshopper. You can, of course, do it upside down if you felt like it. Or turn it sideways and it's on its side. That's quite fun, too. But it's meant to be that way up like that. Four little legs. And it hops around like fury. Especially good if you did it on a, something which is a bit more, re more resonant, like a, a drum skin. It'd be fantastic effect. So, some beautiful effects of that. Are you enjoying things so far? All right. Yep, yep, he's enjoying it. Hope you are as well. What the silly things I picked up in the year 2000. <laughs> Spinnakers was something I used to play with as a kid, and here's a very interesting version of it, which I've never actually used and played with, but it's, the idea is you've got pick-up sticks, and you take two of these, and with that you pick up, having jumbled them up, you've got to pick up one particular one there without disturbing any of the other ones. Of course, I'm disturbing them as I go along, but never mind. Something like that for small children is great fun to do. And to do it with little wavy sticks like that, which are snakes, I suppose, is a very, very charming little adaptation of the old Spillican game, I think. It was a nice, nice design concept. I like that. Well done, the adventures. It's something quite interesting. It was a thing I picked up in MoMA which I go to regularly. It's a glass, it's a tumbler, so you can drink from it. It's got the word MoMA there, but look at the, if I put something behind it and then hold it up something like this and turn it round and round to get some lovely diffraction grating or more patterns or something going on there, which is very nice indeed. The word MoMA appears as I'm turning it round like that. And when it's all said and done, it is an optical illusion of an effect, but it's a drinking vessel and a good sturdy one too, so something I've used for two purposes. Entertain people and drink from it. I love things which have a double purpose. Another very weird thing I picked up when I was doing a cruise in the Mediterranean for the first time in my life was this thing here. What, what you ended up with was this one here, but they provided, if you wanted it, the mould. It's a very nice picture here of a little bit of was it Venice or Sisters of uh, Milano, which made their notice somewhere else, actually? I think it's Barcelona I got this in, actually. But here's something. They provide you with a mould if you want to make your own version. So you pour in the, the liquid stuff there. This is a little thing just to keep it clean. And when it's set, you've got to pull it out and then get painting. And you come up with it. So they provided you not only with a rather nice little three-dimensional scene, I think it's Barcelona, but also a mould to make your own version of it if you wanted to do. And this is an inspiration to show how, how to colour it. It's a little set that, that was most inventive to do something like that. It's more than just a little tourist item, it's something inviting you really to um, be proactive and see if you can copy what they're doing. Good one, that. The year 2019, when we were filming this, of course, was the 50th anniversary of the walking on the moon. Here's a famous picture with Armstrong and Aldrin. Very nice one. But this one is um, a jigsaw puzzle of a sort which I've never seen before. It's a sliced form. So you see what I do when I do this. Look, what's happening here? Oh, 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 turn it over. Yes, it's got lots of little rods. There's a second picture on the back. And each piece, I'll just take out a single piece to show what's going on here. It looks like that. That's a tiny slice of the image. And there's another picture on the back. And it's got these two little hanging points here. And you have to place it exactly in the right order and the right orientation and the right way around. So there's a lot of searching to be able to get the picture formed at the end. At the end of it, you get a nice complete picture. And that's the most original version I've come across of a, of a type of jigsaw puzzle, but sliced forms. Beautiful. The last item is a, a nice bit of um, Optics, which I like. It's got a little switch in here, and it's a lovely display of. Oops. Oh, there we are. Bulbs that glow and have a little program. 
And the fiberglass here, as you see, bunches all together, and there's a key point there. That's where you've got to illuminate. So you simply place that in there, like that, boom. And then you've got a lovely little light display because the program underneath is making the thing oscillate and produce different, the four different colours, flashing, sometimes melting, something to do various other jobs. When it's in a dim enough light, the effect is very pretty. It's one of my favourite objects, I think, when I was looking for novelties about 40, 50 years ago, was seeing the very first one of these fibre optic type semispheres or hemispheres, I suppose it was like that. Looking absolutely lovely because every, the tip of every one shows a little tiny little point of light, which in this case is programmed to make a, a series of colours. Absolute beauty. So the year 2000 for me was a very precious year. I found a lot of extremely interesting stuff and a lot of varied stuff too. So more to come. Oh my.